So, if I were to glue this into this, that would make Welcome to Cosplayland! I am Alice and today we are making some testing to see which glue is the best one to glue some vinyl to craft foam. I have been testing these for a long time. It's not the first time that I have to glue some vinyl or some shiny fabric to craft foam and I have done it in many many different ways but this time I have to do a very complicated thing for my Ganyu cosplay and I thought that the best way to know which one was the best glue for craft phone and vinyl would be just testing every single glue that I had and some that I didn't to see which way it would be better and it would be easier to make this cosplay. First of all I did go through my drawer and checked all the glues that I had and I thought that would be worth checking for this project. My glues included some that I had used in the past and some new additions that I bought specially for these purposes and I was actually surprised with the results of the test but I'm going to show you what I found out and all the glues that I used so if you are ever wondering if it's going to work you have a head start and you know which ones will be more interesting and more useful for your project. I wanted my experiment to be fair so I just decided to cut some pieces of craft phone all the same size just to test with the same amount more or less of glue on the same material. I am just using normal craft foam and it's nothing special, you can get it in any other shop and it's very cheap and easy to use. I am also going to be testing different types of fabric, but for the first test I'm just going to choose one and use it on all my glues. I don't need to glue all of them because I know the backing of my fabric is going to be the same. Once I wrote down all the names of all the glues I'm going to be using, I was ready to start my experiment. Most of the glues were very easy to use as they already come in these squishy bottles so you just had to apply a little bit on one part of the foam and just attach the piece of fabric on top. I also went ahead and did it at the back to see how the fabric would react when you folded it. I tested a total of 10 different glues and once they were all dry I was ready to come to a verdict. Now that I have done all the tests and I've been waiting for a full day to make sure all my glues are dry, I'm just going to be testing them a little bit more and see how they resist a little bit of stretching and how they work with my fabric. I tested a total of 10 glues and I'm going to be ranking them from 1 to 10 according to which ones were the best and which ones were like completely useless. So let's start with the glues that did not work at all and I would just like wouldn't recommend so just just basically forget about them it's not gonna work they are not going to stick they don't even have a ranking so they are just gonna be null points and the first one is going to be this spray for fabric it's supposed to just be a layer that you put on your fabric and then you heat it and what's gonna do is just attach the fabric to other fabric i have the thing here it's ticked a little bit in some places but it actually it just comes off and once it's off you won't be able to reposition it again Actually, I had another problem with it is that you have to apply heat to it and as you know if you apply heat to your craft foam what's gonna happen is that it's obviously going to warp so it's something that I wouldn't recommend and I would just definitely just, you know, forget about it. The second glue that didn't make it and just put on a stick is this very sticky glue which is like something similar to Aline's tacky glue. Perhaps another brand would have been more useful but this one in particular did not work at all and I don't think any other brand would really work 
If you are wondering, I did not really use any craft glue nor wood glue on this process, but this is like the closest thing to those two and it's supposed to be stronger than, the, than them, it's just like supposed to be tackier because if you use anything like craft glue what's gonna happen is that it's gonna soak into your fabric and it's not really going to dry so it's not gonna have a very very good bond. Anyways, uh, this glue is not water resistant either so you may have issues with that and after a full day trying to dry you can see that the fabric is stick to it somehow but it's just like still wet on the inside and it's just a sticking right now just because it's wet and it's, it's just there. There is actually no real um, Actually, there's no, no, there's actually no real bond between these two elements and it's not gonna work. So, if you are thinking of anything like craft glue or white glue or anything like that, you can just forget about it directly. I was able to categorize my findings into four different types of bonding with the fabric and the vinyl. Obviously one of the categories would be the ones that did not stick at all, but then among the ones that did stick, I was able to just group them into several groups. The first group, which is the best one, is the ones that sticked perfectly well and you would say that they are quite useful and you would be using them. The second category are some that did stick but had some adherence problems just here and there and in my third category I put the ones that did stick however they did not get a very nice result in the end because the fabric and the vinyl got warped somehow so if you're gonna be use them, using them at the front of your fabric they are gonna show and they don't have a very pretty look at the end. In this category that has the fabric that did stick however had some problems with warping and didn't look so good, we have the interfacing. This is a type of interfacing that has glue on both sides and it's used to attach fabric to fabric, usually more for flicks and that kind of stuff that you are supposed to be top stitching later on. But if it's a good one like this one, this is uh, from Glycelin, I don't really know how to pronounce that brand and I think that you can also get something like heat and bond but it's not very common here in Europe so uh, this brand has this sticky thing that you just put with the iron on your fabric you just have to take the backing off and then use your iron again to attach the other side of your fabric this did work and did stick very well my fabric to the phone but I had several in my opinion, big issues with it. The first issue would be the same as before, because you are applying heat to craft foam, it's going to warp, so you won't be able to keep the homogeneous um, craft foam how you could it initially. It's gonna warp, it's gonna just make some strange things, and it's definitely gonna burn. The other problem that I had is that on this fabric in particular, it made the surface really, really, really rough. If you see the surface of this one, the foam is completely melted and it's very, very sticky. However, you can just see that it's very well attached. However, you can see that the surface is very weird and very porous. This may depend on which fabric you use, if you are using anything which is a slightly thicker or if you are using a layer of patting in between those layers, you may be okay with this type of fabric. However, uh, for this particular case, I think it did not work so well and we still had to, you know, go through the problem of your actual foam just melting and just warping. So it's, it's kind of difficult to work with it as well. You can only put it at the front of the a piece and you will really really struggle to just put those pieces around any edges so I don't really think that this is a very useful way of doing it it's pricey and overall I just did not like it on seventh place we have hot glue I know you as a cosplayer 
will love a hot gun. I personally hate this stuff because it just burns you and honestly it's, it's overrated, it doesn't stick so well. In this particular case the fabric did stick very well, however the problem that you have with hot glue is that it's very very difficult to control so what's going to happen is that it's going to create these ridges and you are going to see where the hot glue fell, it's very difficult to make it homogeneous and definitely again we are going to have some warping on the actual craft foam and you are going to burn your fingers, I mean it's just a lot of issues for this particular material and this particular glue. It doesn't mean that you can't use it, you definitely can, but I would totally try to just use this on the back of your material only, because if you put it at the front, you are going to be seeing all those problems and all those lines, which are not very pretty. So. Does it work? Yes, however, you can't really apply it to the front of your fabric, otherwise it will definitely show all the imperfection of your glue. Place number six is for contact cement. You can find this in these tubes or you can find it in pots as well. Either of them would work, I've used it before and they are quite useful, however, we have a similar problem. Same as before, what happens with the contact cement is that it's going to make those ridges and those uneven surfaces on your fabric. Again, if you're using a thicker fabric, you probably will be alright, but keep in mind there's going to be lots of fumes and you're going to probably need a respirator if you're using a big piece. And overall, the texture of this is not great once you put it at the front. This is because the contact cement will expand, so there's gonna create like little pockets of air inside the fabric and it's going to create this uneven surface when those are together. So yeah, again, it works very well if you are just using it just at the back of your fabric, but if you're planning on using it at the front and just do something complicated, perhaps it's not great. I must say that in this particular case, I only used one layer and that was enough to glue both things. Um, I know that contact cement is supposed to work as two layers that you put a layer of contact cement on each side and then they stick together very well, but as this is a very Por porous, porous? As this is a very porous surface, it was enough with one layer and it kind of like stuck both parts pretty well. Again, the bond is quite strong, it will stay, however, the surface and the texture is not great, so I'm just gonna give this one number six. On number five, I'm going to place the super glue. Yeah! It actually worked. I'm surprised. I was expecting it not to work at all, but it did, so I'm just gonna give it that position. The thing with super glue is that it did stick the fabric and it's quite even, the surface is quite even. You can't really see where I placed the super glue at the front nor at the back. It was an immediate bond. Now, the problem with this is that super glue is very, very, very brittle, so if you notice, if I just pull a little bit, you can even hear it. If it breaks, that's it. You can't get it back. It can be a little bit complicated. And again, we have, again, the problem with the fumes and the problem that it's going to be very, very expensive because you're going to need a lot of super glue in order to get this correctly glued to a big piece. So even if it gave me a smooth surface, I found it too brittle, definitely, the moment you move your fabric like that, you can hear it cracking on the inside, so I don't think as a long-term solution this will work, but it's great if you need to touch up something. Also, the other problem with it is that the super glue is definitely going to go through your fabric and it's going to stain your fabric if you attach this to fabric. So I would just be careful with that one and definitely you're going to be sticking your fingers together. So I'll just leave it on number five. I think that's, that's quite fair. 
on the fourth position and it was a very tight decision, I'm gonna place E6000. If you don't know this glue, honestly, you are missing out because this really will glue anything. It's a very versatile glue that will glue anything from fabric to little beads. It's just great, like honestly, whenever I don't know what glue to use because I think it's not going to stick, this has always saved my life. And um, yeah, the only problem is that it's slightly pricey, about like six or seven pounds per little pot like this. And also, of course, it's going to be like super, you know, bad for your health, like most glues are. This glue actually stuck the piece very well. As you can see, you can't really see very well. You can only like hint where the piece of glue is, but I didn't go all the way around it, so it's normal that that happens. However, the surface is very smooth and it stuck very well. If you try to pull it off, it will peel slightly, but you need to just put a lot of force into it in order to peel. And the good thing about this glue is that it's completely elastic, so you can just move your craft foam and you know it's going to stay and it's not going to crack. Now, the problem I have with this glue is that it took a long time to dry and if you are trying to do the back of the vinyl at the same time as the front, it just didn't do a very good job. This part, because it was flat all the time and the gravity was pressing on it, it stuck very well and it's not going to come off. However, the back part, because it was bent, it just, as you can see, it did not work. So if you wanted this glue to work, you would need a long time and probably you would need to just attach some clips around it uh, for it to be fixed to the actual foam. It is water resistant and as I said, it's crack resistant, but I don't think it's the best solution because, as I said, it takes a long time to dry, which is usually not ideal, especially if you are doing intricate parts and small parts with it. And now we are getting to the top three glues that I would recommend to attach craft foam to vinyl. In position number three, and with no surprises at all, except for the cut, we have our fabric glue. I'm used in this case the brand Beacon, they have something called Fabritac which is permanent adhesive and it was very easy to use and you can also, it says on the back that you can thin it with a little bit of acetone which means that potentially you could be brushing this with an old brush if you wanted to just use it on a very big surface. Now, you can see that these glues stuck very well, you don't have any marks on your fabric and it is still attached. It's not the strongest bond, but it will still stay there unless you pull it. I must say that I had to glue the back part again because the first time it didn't work so well, it didn't like being bent so much, but the second time it did the charm and it did stay, so I think I would use this if I needed to use it for vinyl. Also, I need to mention that the brand, or rather the quality of your glues, does matter. I did try another brand of fabric glue, this time it's called Trim It, and this one is a cheaper brand and it's more for craft projects, even if it's for fabric glue, and I didn't have the same results. You can see that in this occasion this brand did not glue very well together and the bond is definitely not as strong as the other ones. So basically, before you commit and you get any glue that you find in the market, please research it first because there will be different strengths and it will depend very much on the brand, on the composition and you may need to make your own tests in order to see if the brand that you have got is going to work or not. It's time now to reveal the position number two and it was a very tough decision to put this one on number two and it was actually a very big surprise. I would have never expected this glue to, to make it. I was actually thinking that it would not work at all. So when I saw it ranking so high, I, I was completely surprised. 
And this glue that I used is Uhu All Purpose Adhesive. It was cheap, I bought this very cheap, it's very easy to find over here, and it's true, it's, it's all purpose adhesive. However, I must say, I've used it in the past, I've tried it for other things, it did not work at all, I was willing to put it in the bin because uh, it's one of those glues that I never ever ever use. And I was really surprised when I actually found out that this will actually stick to foam and fabric together. I must say that I have used this just for foam and it has not worked for me. Uh, perhaps I need to use another test or something. It was horrible, so I was very surprised when I saw that it was sticking to fabric and foam together. This is the test piece for the Uhu. As you can see, this is well stuck together and even if you pull, it's not getting out. And basically, it did a very good job. It did stick to both sides. It's very quick and it's very cheap to get. The only problem as before is that as many other glues, it will have some fumes and you may need to be careful and use a respirator if you are using it for big, big parts of your cosplay. However, this was perfect and you can't even see where the glue is underneath the fabric, which I think was a great win for this particular glue. So I put it on number two but it's very very close to number one and you will see when I tell you which one is number one that you can use either or both to, for to your that you can use either or both for your projects because they are both used for different purposes I would say and finally the big reveal the number one glue I would use for my craft foam and vinyl projects and it's no other than double-sided tape double-sided tape you didn't hear this double-sided tape and you must be thinking you are crazy what do you mean double-sided tape yeah this was the best of all the glues that i tried just simple double-sided tape once again, this one in particular is good strength, it's not the cheap one that you get on your thrift store, it was slightly more expensive, but it's not much more expensive than the normal one, it's not even a branded double-sided tape. I literally got a bunch of these on Amazon, like three of these for £6, £2, a very long reel of double-sided tape. And it's just amazing. It was like the best solution if you want to be doing this in a very big project. It's cheap, it's easy to find, and it's, it sticks very well. If you don't believe me, this is the piece that I use with the double-sided tape. And you can see that it sticks perfectly well. If you pull it, you can pull it off, but the moment you put it back, it sticks again, it's, it's magic, which means you can actually reposition this so if there's any bubbles or if there's anything which is not on the place that you want, you are going to be able to reposition this and just make it look as flat as you can. Also look at that corner over there, no problems, it's sticking all the places, it's not messy, sticking to the back as well. I mean, it's, it's the perfect solution really. It's quick, it's cheap, it's non-toxic, and it sticks perfectly well. I know, I, I blew your mind. I was not surprised because I have used it in the past, but yeah, the simplest solution was the one that worked the best, and this is the one I, I would recommend. But of course, this is not enough for a test, so I went ahead and I carried out some more tests with this particular glue and see how it would react with different shapes and complicated parts on foam. 
Once I had chosen my glue, I was ready to test it with different types of fabric. The first one is this spandex, which is elastic, and it should be the easiest one to use for this kind of project. I also tried with this vinyl that wasn't elastic at all, and I had a lot of it and was hoping it would work. Finally, I used some pleather, which happened to be slightly elastic in one side, which helped when I was doing this covering, but in general was a much thicker piece of fabric. For all the pieces, I did exactly the same. I just put the tape on top of the fabric and then I just had to peel the back of all my double-sided tape. I placed the foam on top of the fabric and then I just had to trim the excess. I'm gonna be testing how good this fabric is if I cut some shapes on the corners and if I don't I know for sure that it's gonna be too bulky on the corners so I'm just gonna cut those corners off beforehand but on this corner which is like more round I tried first doing it without any cuts on it and the bottom part which is also round I will be trying to make those cut and see if there is any difference between doing both techniques. The most difficult part to cover is always going to be any holes that you get on your phone because they are gonna overstretch your fabric and you will definitely need to make some cuts to make it work. If this is going to work, the place where you are gonna see how good or how not good this fabric is, is here. And this is how it looks. My first fabric, as expected, worked very well. You can barely see those corners that you had to cut to make your fabric shape to your form. And it's actually a very clean finish. It was very easy to make and I had no problems at all. My second fabric was not as difficult to make as you would have expected and in general it looked quite clean even if you could see a little bit of the edges where you had to cut your fabric. However, it gave me a second problem and that is that whenever I move my fabric because it's not elastic and there's glue at the back, it was making these kind of ripples on the fabric and potentially if I were to be moving with it, it would create these ugly folds in the fabric which I didn't like. Finally, I was expecting my pleather fabric to be too thick and not turn it at all on those corners and I was pleasantly surprised that it actually did a very good job. This one in particular somehow had a little bit of a stretch on one side and it just turned very well on all those corners. It just made it a little bit thicker but it's not a bad effect either. Here you can see the three pieces with the fabric. This one is the non-stretch one that gives those ripple effect. The one which is stretchy is much better and will do anything with the foam. And finally the pleather which is still quite good but probably because this one in particular had a little bit of stretch on it. Double-sided tape seemed to be the ideal solution to do the craft foam and vinyl, however as you do in a test, I decided to leave all my glues dry for a full day and after doing some experiments, I'm going to show you how my pieces look today. Now, originally the double-sided tape stuck very well to all the pieces that I made the test on and they are still attached at the front. However, what happened is that the back couldn't stand all that surface tension and it kind of like wanted to stick back in particular with the thicker pleather this is what happened you can see that it's just racing you can push it back again and it will make it look flat again but I, I am sure that in a few days it will just unstick again unless I prevent it from doing this of course you can iron this piece if you wanted to but we have the problem that we had with the ironing before it could warp your pieces so it's not probably it's probably not the best 
solution for it. With the non-stretch vinyl I had a similar problem, it wasn't as bad as with the pleather because it's not so strong, however that tension was again making my fabric to stop sticking to that double-sided tape. You can push it again, but again, as a long-term solution, it's not perfect. However, I am happy to announce that the one that I stuck with my elastic fabric did not have so much that problem and it kind of stuck together quite well, probably because this fabric is thinner and it's better stuck together like that, so that gives me hope. The other test that I carried out is once I had my vinyl, I wanted to stick it to a piece of fabric and to be honest that gave a solution to the previous problem with the double-sided tape which was that it raised after a while. If you see these pieces, I just stuck a piece of fabric like the one I'm going to be using to my pleather, my elastic fabric and my non-elastic fabric and the three of them stock flat and they have no problems they are they have no problems of ad adherence they are very well stuck together and potentially the tension of this layer of fabric that will be like the lining is going to keep this from just getting off the actual vinyl and the craft foam so it could be a solution for the previous problem I'm probably going to stick with this double-sided tape option however if you wanted to be sure personally I would use double-sided tape just to shape everything and perhaps around the corners on the inside where you where you want to be able to see it I would use one of the other glues that we know that work for this project I also made a test to see if this would be water resistant, not because I thought I would be needing to wash my cosplays very often, but because the effect of your sweat after a very long day at a convention could work against my materials, so I just made sure that they were water resistant and even if it unstuck a little bit at some point if I pulled it, it actually behaved quite well and had no problems with it. The truth is that there is not one answer at which was the best glue for craft phone. Most of them worked in a different way and depending on your project you will want to use one or another. Or maybe several of them, it just depends on what you are going to be making and it's up to you to decide which one is best. And this is all I have for today. I'm just going to mention a few other products that I know are a possibility and I have used in the past but I refuse to use for this test and these are the spray glues. Now I have used spray glues in the past, you can get spray glues that are like contact cement and you can use some spray glues that will just hold your fabric similar as what you will find on your double-sided tape. However, I find they are extremely difficult to use in the sense of they are very messy, if they stick into anything like the floor, it's very difficult to take it off. I actually haven't been able to take off the glue from the floor in my mum's house. So I do not recommend them because they are messy, even if you put something on the floor to protect it. And they are also not so good for the environment because they have all kinds of things inside the surprise. So I tend to just not use them if I can avoid them. Also, they are very pricey and one of these glues, again, if you want them from a good brand, it could be up to £20 for just one can that may or may not be enough. They also tend to clot, so if you don't use them in a while, what's going to happen is that your £20 are going to just, just go to the bin because it will clot the actual spray nozzle on the can and you won't be able to use it again, so I think the cost efficiency is not justifiable for me to buy them and I'm not going to be using them. They do work, they do similar things to the other glues that you have seen today, but again, if you want to test them, feel free to use them. I hope you found this tutorial useful and let me know in the comments which glue is the one that you preferred the most. 
I will be linking a chart in the description with all the glues that I use, so feel free to check it out. I am going to be testing this technique for my Ganyu cosplay, so make sure to come back next week to see how that goes. See you next time, bye! The irony. That's the cat's bed. That's where the cat decides to sit. Um, that's where the other cat is just thinking about having fun with her sister. <laughs>